Hi everybody, I am Johanna Varner. And I'm Patrice Connors. And we are both faculty at Colorado Mesa University and part of the SquirrelNet team. Um, today what we're gonna do is give you an overview of the Behavioral Observations module, which is one of our most widely used modules in SquirrelNet. Yep, so there are uh, many factors to contribute how much time an animal can spend foraging uh, versus looking out for predators. So because there are going to be students from Alabama to Alaska who are using these same protocols to collect observational data on squirrel behavior, it's very important that you follow the protocol very carefully. This is a really cool module because it really allows us to test hypotheses about squirrel behaviors that can sort of go beyond just the habitat and the species that are close to you, but can extend to lots of different habitats and lots of different species across the whole country. Yep, so what we'd like to start with is first go over the ethogram, which you will be using to measure and identify these different behaviors. So an ethogram is a pretty cool tool that a lot of different scientists use when studying animal behavior because they describe all of the possible behaviors that your animal, that the animal that you're watching can do. So our ethogram, you'll see, can categorize most of the behaviors that a squirrel would possibly be observed doing, but then categorizes them into these four broad categories of vigilance, foraging, social behaviors, and other behaviors. So first we'll start with vigilance. This vigilance behavior involves an animal with its head up, uh, alertly looking around for predators. Sometimes our squirrels will be on two feet, sometimes they'll be on four feet. It kind of depends on the species that you're looking at. Um, you can also uh, include alarm calls when an animal is vocalizing in this category. The second major category of behaviors is foraging behaviors, and these refer to any kind of behavior in which the animal is looking for food or handling food, and this includes carrying food to a cache. You might also observe alert feeding, which is its own category. This is when an animal is handling food with its front paws while scanning for predators. So this is its own category that's a little bit different uh, just from feeding. Social behaviors, as the name implies, involve behaviors in which an animal is interacting with another animal of the same species. So sometimes this could be adorable snuggling or grooming each other, and sometimes it's chasing or fighting, which with squirrels can still be adorable. All right, and then the last uh, kind of group or category of interactions and behaviors that you might see, we're just calling other, because there's a lot of other things these squirrels can be doing, right? They could be resting, they could be running, they could be grooming. Um, so as you're recording these behaviors, we also just have that last broad category of other. So remember that while you're watching the squirrel, you'll be paying attention to the different specific behaviors that, it's, that it is exhibiting, but you don't have to write down exactly what the squirrel is doing. Remember, every 20 seconds instead, you're just going to categorize its behavior as foraging, social, vigilant, alert feeding, which of course includes vigilance and feeding at the same time, or other, which would be anything that's not above. All right, so that kind of wraps up the different behaviors that you'll be recording. Um, and just remember that these behaviors will depend on the focal species that you're studying. So our protocol is built to be super flexible, so you can follow any squirrel species and submit the data to the data set. And a lot of times we just think about squirrels as being sort of like the red squirrels and gray squirrels that are very commonly seen in many places, especially urban habitats and including most college campuses. However, um, keep in mind that that lots of other mammals are also squirrels and this includes things you might not always think of like prairie dogs, marmots, or chipmunks. Yep and so if you ever have any issues trying to identify the species that you're looking at there's a lot of nice tools out there to help you. So for instance there's um, the uh, website and app created by AI Naturalist uh, where they'll, they, you can actually use your smart device or your phone to take a picture of the species you're looking at and they'll help it identify it for you. Alternatively, you can also use uh, different sorts of small mammals field guides. Um, and of course, hopefully your instructor provided you some additional resources to help you out. Keep in mind that the, because the protocol is really flexible and squirrels are so common, they're active during the day and they're pretty easy to identify, you can really do this protocol anywhere. So if you're staying home uh, and not going to school, you can probably find a squirrel near your home to observe. Or if you are on campus, most college campuses have squirrels accessible and we have some resources to help you identify which squirrels might be present on your college campus. So we're gonna take a minute now and familiarize you with the protocol. Um, we'll kind of go over exactly what you need to do when you first arrive at the site. 
Some tools you're going to want to have handy with you as you're completing this um, assignment and activity is first and foremost a phone or some sort of smart device. This will be important for not only collecting your GPS data, but also using it as a timer. You'll also want some binoculars uh, in order to get a better look at your squirrel species. And then of course, the data sheet. And, and, a, and a partner. Yeah, partners are optional. So quick note about the best way to use a pair of binoculars. Um, what you definitely don't want to do is just quickly scan the whole landscape, pull them up to your eyes quickly, and just kind of look around. You're probably actually not going to be able to see uh, the focal species that you're trying to identify. The best practices are going to be identifying what you're trying to look at, keep a very steady gaze, and then slowly raise your binoculars up, at which point then you can adjust your focus so that hopefully you get an awesome view of your squirrel. All right, so when you arrive to your field site, uh, take a moment and familiarize yourself with your data sheet and the ethergram. Uh, make sure to record things like the biome, your name, the date, as well as the weather conditions of your field site. You'll also need to take a GPS coordinate. You can do this either with a GPS unit if you have access to one, or you can use a number of free GPS apps available on your phone as well. Um, Gaia GPS and Handy GPS are really good options. Just make sure that your settings are set to WGS 84 and that you're recording five decimal degrees. Other data you should record at this point also includes the distance to safety from your focal species, such as a, a burrow or a tree, as well as the distance to an edge or um, human-like uh, structures. So this is going to be important covariates um, for your analysis that you might want to consider uh, recording these factors that might take an effect on the behaviors of your animal. So you're going to work in pairs. One student will be the timer and the other will be the observer. So the timer oftentimes will also record. The timer will call out the time every 20 seconds and then the observer will report what the squirrel was doing at that exact moment at the 20 seconds. Now, alerts feeding. Keep in mind that it doesn't actually matter what the squirrel was doing in the interval between the 20 second call outs, it matters what it was doing just at that moment. The recorder then can circle on the data sheet the category of behavior, vigilant, foraging, social, or other that the squirrel was doing at that time. So this is also a great opportunity for you to engage your friends or maybe even some family members in the research that you're doing, particularly if you are conducting this research remotely and you're not on campus and instead at home. If you are working alone, um, you can, uh, instead of having someone call out these times for you, you can use a stopwatch or some sort of timer app. Um, there's plenty of Tabata timer apps that are freely available that you can download to your smart device. So you're going to want to make sure that you record the animal for five minutes and then switch roles. It's okay after the five minute observation period ends if you want to switch roles and continue watching the same squirrel. You just want to make sure that you're not watching the same squirrel at the same time as another team so that you're not duplicating the data from the same period of time on the same individual. So once you're done, you're going to tally up all of the behaviors in each of the categories that you recorded. So these are what you will enter into the online data sheet. You'll also record any other species present. This could include dogs, other species of squirrel, or perhaps a bird. Any other humans that you see, of course, not counting yourself and your partner who need to be there for making the observation. Then, uh, once you have this all tallied, you're going to submit your da data onto the uh, national database electronically. So you will use the link that's included on the data sheet to do this. We've provided some additional ideas for implementing these same protocols if you're having to work remotely and you don't have any access to squirrels. One sort of creative way you could do this would be to find a, a friend or a classmate who does have access to squirrels, have them follow the squirrel on a video chat while you record data from home. All right, you see the squirrel? Yep, I see him. Great. Okay, start timing. All right, timer's on. Yep, so that's it. So your assignments um, for how to access the data and the kind of analyses you will be conducting uh, will depend on your instructor and what they've uh, provided for you to do. Happy, Happy squirreling! squirreling!